How's your ankle? Cold. Cute, Tina. Real cute. I've been told that. Kind of cute yourself, you know? Hey, look, will you lighten up? Well, don't take life so seriously. You'll live longer. I have a lot to be serious about. All right, all right. I give up. But I won't apologize for the way I kissed you before. <laughs> you know, you're not half the wimp Courtney makes you out to be. And the way you just jumped in front of that gun like that. <sighs> She's really under your skin, isn't she? <laughs> I suppose that's one way of putting it. Well, what is it now? Come on, she must have done something. You've been down all morning. I'd really rather not talk about it. Look, Vaughn, it helps to talk about these things. It really does. And besides, if it concerns Courtney, you know I'm going to find out about it sooner or later. So why not sooner? You know, you're really quite persuasive. I can't, I can't be what I mean what I say. Look, you're not worried that I'm going to run to Courtney with everything we talked about, are you? Well, don't be worried, Vaughn. I promise that anything we say here will stay strictly between us. Honest. All right. You see, Courtney and I had a talk last night. And uh, she told me that she didn't think there was a future for us. Well, that's not anything she hasn't said a hundred times before. <sighs> but I don't know, I'd, I began to hope that things were different since her mother died. Courtney depended on me. I began to feel as if we were getting closer. And that's not how she saw it, huh? <laughs> not exactly. She said, thank you for my help. But that's all. Look, Vaughn, you did me a real big favor. And now it's time I think I did something for you. And what does that mean? Look, I know Courtney better than you think I do. You can't take her literally. Oh, come on, Tina. No, look, just, just hear me out, okay? Now, I have some inside information that I think you should hear. Some inside information? Yeah. I think it's about time you found out just exactly what Courtney is doing. So how's it going? Oh, it's going fine. It's just, it's a job, you Yeah, know? I know what you mean. Hey, look it, Ione brought these over. She said that maybe you would like to see these. These is what, what she used for the, um, the church, church banquet. And yeah. she thought that maybe you might be able to use them. Yeah, I know. What's the matter? Oh, Nance, look, would you do me a favor? Would you look at something with me? Yeah, sure. Okay, here, look in this catalog on page 207, I think it is. And yes, this is it. You turned oh. right to it. And this is the centerpiece that I'm going to use at the ball. Well, that I want to use at the ball. Now, you look at those and you tell it's me what you think. absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, you see? It's more stunning. Well, George is a Fairfield. No wonder. Yeah. Gee, well, there's no contest, Lori. I know. Do you think Ione will understand? I... Oh, yeah. You know Ione. Yeah, well, I'll just tell her you don't need it. Mm. She'll be fine. Yeah, well, it's just that, you know, the, the Bedford Institute charity ball is different than church. Anyway, let me get you some coffee. I just made oh, some. I love some. Thank uh, you. No sugar and cream, yeah, just right? black. Yeah. Just okay. Black. Me too. I, in fact, I'm surprised that you were in. I figured, you know, this being Fourth of July, you'd probably be out on a church picnic or something. That's where uh, Terry and Dave are. In fact, Ione asked me to come along. Yeah. You know, I really wanted to go to that, but uh, it just slipped my mind. I guess. Why didn't you go on there with Ione? Well. Laura, you know me and church people. <laughs> anyway, you know, I'm, I'm really enjoying Domi, and I, I don't want to get into any conversations about it. So, anyway, what's your excuse? Well, well I ju I've just been busy, and it just slipped right past me. That's all. Ben, what are you doing here? I thought you weren't getting home till later. Well, I only played the front nine. Uh, it's getting a little too hot. Hi, Nancy. What's the matter with you? Something's wrong. No, why does something seem to matter? What is it? Well, as a matter of fact, there is something wrong. Uh, one of the Institute's patients died, Barbara Gilbert. Oh, no! Yeah, an apparent suicide.
So, that was tennis with Tina. Okay. Yeah. Is this the Gil Prescott I know? Huh? Now, wait a minute. If you mean what I think you do, you're way off base, Peter. I've changed. You know that better than anybody else. Hey, okay, look, don't come down hard on me. I'm just seeing if you hit it off. <laughs> we had a date. That was that. No big deal. You gonna see her again? I don't know. Maybe. Why? Are you interested in her? Oh, no. Though she's kind of cute. Why don't you ask her out? You mean that, or are you just saying it? Haven't you been listening to me, Peter? Well, yeah, but I saw the way you looked at Tina in Leon's diner. A little gleam in your eye. Hey, maybe you're getting over Stacy faster than you think. Suicide? How terrible. Well, the police think it was a suicide. In any case, it was definitely an overdose. Ben, did you say the woman's name was Barbara Gilbert? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert. Nancy, do you know her? Well, I don't know. No, there was a woman around Domi whose name is Mrs. Gilbert, but it, it can't be her because th this woman was a viceroy. I mean, that's practically a master, so I know suicide would be out of the question. Hmm. Hun, do you think we could have some lunch soon? Oh, sure, yeah, I'll get it started. Nancy, you want to stay? No, that's all right. I'm just Are you sure? anyway. Yeah, that's fine. I really got to get back to the Greenbrier. I'll grab something to eat there. Thanks right, a lot, listen, anyway. Thank Bye, you for bringing the okay. decorations. That was bye -bye. really sweet. Okay, bye, bye, Ben. Bye. I'm very glad she didn't stay. Oh. Look, this, uh, it's Mrs. Gilbert. She was one of your patients? Yes. I know how terrible you must feel. No, I don't think you do. There's a whole lot more to this than I wanted to say in front of Nancy. It's quite possible that uh, Mrs. Gilbert OD'd on the medication I gave her. Oh, Ben, no. Yeah, I prescribed a tranquilizer, a Sivanol. I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe she didn't follow the directions. Maybe she mixed something else with it. That's what John Brubaker thinks. So John called you to tell you the news? No, he came by the office. He came by the office? Yes, but unofficially. He just wanted to be the first one to tell me what happened. So, so when can he tell you for sure why she died? When the coroner files his report. John said he'd call me and let me know what happened. Look, you have done nothing wrong. You have nothing to worry about. I don't know. So who are you calling? Brian. I've been trying to find him all morning. I don't know where he is. You see what I'm saying, Vaughn? She's playing a game. Look, she's told me that she wants her freedom for a while. And, and she knows she has you, and she knows that if she wants you, all she has to do is pull that little string and you'll come running. I don't want to hurt you, Vaughn, but that's the way Courtney thinks. I don't believe you. Look, she's told me that herself. She's told me that she can go out with whomever she wants, whenever she wants, and she can rest easy in the fact that you'll still be there waiting for her. All right, if that's true, why does she bother with the legal hassles of an annulment? It's all part of the game. Part of what game? Look, look, she doesn't want to be saddled with a husband. It can get in the way of a, of a relationship, if you oh. know what I'm saying. And you're referring to Peter Davidson, of course. Because once the annulment is finalized, she and Peter can get back together again? Look, it doesn't matter if it's Peter Davidson. It doesn't matter who it is. What matters is the challenge challenge yes and the bigger the challenge the better the prize don't you see she's playing a game wait a minute we're, we're talking about the same person here courtney think about it vaughn i have no reason to lie to you no you don't whenever courtney has needed me she's let me know she had me now she doesn't need me she lets me go. And she knows that if she ever needs you again, she knows right where to find you. Just like when her mother died. I must admit, it makes sense. Of course, it explains her inconsistencies, too. 
Well, don't look so down. <laughs> Why not? This doesn't change anything. Oh, well, now that's not necessarily true. You see, it takes one game player to know another. Now, I am an ace game player, whereas Courtney's new at it. What are you getting at? If we work together, I bet you stand a good chance of getting Courtney back. Now, I've never much liked playing games. Just listen to me for a second, okay? Just listen to me, and I guarantee you want to play this game. Courtney will believe you if you sound convincing. Look, all you have to do is tell her that if she pushes the annulment, you're going to produce this woman in court. And she will testify that you are perfectly capable of having physical relations with a caring and responsive female. Oh, God, I love it. Courtney will go through the roof. <laughs> Tina, I think that foot is robbing your brain of some much-needed circulation. Vaughn, what is wrong with you? Look, you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Courtney's too smart. She'll never buy that. Yes, she will if you handle it right. I'll be there to coach you. Well, don't you think Courtney's going to wonder why I didn't tell her about this before? Ah, that's a good point. Um... <sighs> okay. Okay, I got it. You didn't tell her because you felt ashamed. I mean, after all, you were engaged to her, but, you know, while all this was happening. Oh, oh, and this is great. Okay, this is great. You tell her that you didn't want to hurt her. You didn't want her to know that she's the one who's responsible for your impotence. Huh? I don't think it's going to work, Tina. Uh, yes, it will, Vaughn, if you play the game. Look, the whole object of this thing is to, is to stop this from going to court, right? If you produce this woman, you know that's, that, you know that's what's going to happen. Courtney would never be humiliated like that. Look, she'll drop the annulment and come running back to you. It's foolproof. So you gotta admit, Tina's very special. Oh, come on. This is the gentleman. Oh. Peter. Oh. Yeah, Hi there, Mr. Carpenter. How are you? Fine. Hey, um, I guess I should be going. Oh, Anyways. no, Peter, please don't leave because of me. No, it's all right. No, I need to get back to the Chronicle. I've already eaten, and, uh... Hey, I just want to say that I'm very, very sorry about your wife. Oh, uh, my condolences as well. well. Thank you. Thank you both. I appreciate that very much. I will miss her a great deal. Is, uh... Is Courtney okay? Oh, she's bearing up nicely. Though, and thank you for stopping by to express your sympathy. It meant a lot to Courtney, and I know it must have been difficult for you. No, no. It was, it was something I wanted to do. Yeah. Well, well, while you were there, did you and Vaughn straighten out your difficulties? <laughs> he still thinks I attacked Courtney. Well, the poets say love is blind. And he loves Courtney very much, so I guess we could expect him to overreact and be overprotective. I need to get back to the paper. Good to see you. Right. Here you go. Yeah, take it easy. So, um, have you made a decision on my bid? Yes, I have. I've reviewed all the bids for Commonwealth Trans Express. And the Chesterfield docks will be constructed by Prescott Development. That's great. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. I'm sure we'll do the job exactly the way you want it done. <laughs> Oh, yes, quite frankly, I do find that a little hard to believe. Yes? Fine. Yes, thank you. Bye. Then why are you trying to get a hold of Brian? Does he know something about Mrs. Gilbert? Well, that's exactly what I'm trying to find out. Well, I don't understand. You see, the day Mrs. Gilbert came to my office, Brian referred her to me. Yes, yeah, so you think he can shed some light on what's happened? Well, I don't know, but I intend to find out. Because when John told me about Mrs. Gilbert, he said he had talked to Brian earlier, and Brian never mentioned the referral. Well, that, that doesn't necessarily mean anything, does it? Well, maybe not. But now I can't find Brian anywhere. He's nowhere to be found. His own service doesn't know where he is. Now, isn't that just a little bit suspicious to you? No, not really. I mean, you know what a hassle it is to try and find Brian just on a normal work day. Today's July the 4th, honey. He could be anywhere. <sighs> Good point. Yeah, okay. Hey, you come over here and sit down. You need to relax. A little tense. Give us a massage. 
Mm. How's that feel? Great. Ben. Huh? You have done nothing wrong, and you should have no guilt about Mrs. Gilbert's death. It's not that I feel guilty, but... But what? Now, you treated her like you would any other patient, right? Whether it was at the Bedford Institute or Kingsley General or the clinic. Yeah, that's right. So you have nothing to worry about. Hey, you have nothing to worry about. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, what do you think? Isn't it a great idea? All right. Let's assume that your plan, uh, your game, as you call it, works. It can't miss. All right. Assuming that Courtney comes back to me, then what? I don't get you. Tina, how will I be able to make love to Courtney? I mean, I'll still be impotent, and she'll know that it was all a lie and start the annulment process all over again. Maybe not. Maybe not. What does that mean? How did you feel when I kissed you? Deep down inside, how did you feel? Well, I was surprised. Oh, come on, Vaughn. It was more than that, and you know it. Look, deep down inside, didn't you feel something? Of course you did. And you know why? Because I was grateful to you for protecting me, and I responded to you. Now, when have you ever known Courtney to be that responsive or appreciative? Doctors always said my problems were psychological. I wonder. I mean, if, if Courtney has more to do with my impotence than I'd realized. Look, Vaughn, if you play your cards right, she's going to drop this annulment and come running right back into your arms. And once she lets her defenses down, there's nothing you two can't do, so to speak. You really think so? Look, she is a stubborn girl. And you have got to be just as stubborn in your love for her as she is in your rejection of you. You've got to meet her stride for stride. Dr. Phillips was telling me about that. At least, I mean, about the stubborn love. I wonder if that's what he meant. I don't know, but if it works, go for it. You know something? The night that she was crying, the night that she learned about her mother dying, when I held her, there was something different about it. Something that wasn't there before. You're right, Tina. You're right, this is it. This is the only way. This is what I need. I'll buy the time to stop the annulment. <laughs> now that's what I wanted to hear. Oh, <laughs> it's gotta work, Vaughn. All right. All right, one last thing. Okay. Who is going to be this woman that I supposedly slept with before I? I mean, what if she's, she's bound to ask him? Why not me? You? Well, hey, look, I mean, I, I was introduced to you before you married Courtney. You were in Kingsley long enough before then. Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't think that's such a good idea. Why not? Look, you can tell her that this whole thing happened while she was running around chasing Peter Davidson. Yeah, but are you sure that you, you want her to think that it was you? Well, not really, but if it comes down to it, it's okay. Look, Vaughn, you sacrificed your life for me. I'd rather have you myself, but I can see that you're still stuck on her, so I'll just forget about that. Look, the important thing is that you're happy. <laughs> and I'll do whatever I can to help you. I think it'll work. <laughs> you're great, Tina. <laughs> You want some dessert? No, thanks. I'll get it for you. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Martin. Uh, yeah, uh, would you hold on, please? 
This is the mayor's office. They would like to know what is the problem and why you're not going to be no. at the award ceremony. No, 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 no. I, wait, I just cannot deal with this right now. You talk to them, you make up an excuse, you just say anything. No. Uh, yes, um, I'm sorry, Dr. Martin won't be able to come to the phone right now. No, I'm sorry, he won't be able to make it to the award ceremony. Wait a minute, wait. Yes, listen, would, can I call you back? I can't go into it right now, but I just need some time. Okay, fine, I'll call you back. Thank you very much.